This is the third program in our series, SPAD Risk. Once again, we're going to look at four fairly common risks and think about how these potentially dangerous situations could have been avoided. I'm here at the new Southwest Trains simulator facility in Basingstoke. These simulators are able to recreate a wide and varied range of weather conditions and operational abnormalities so that drivers can get a hands-on experience, which would otherwise be impossible. This type of training is yet another method of ensuring the safety of train operations. Let's go down the Bournemouth line and look at our first reconstruction. The driver of this Virgin Voyager is heading east on an early summer morning. The sun is unusually bright and is at a low elevation because of the time of day. Because he's following a Weymouth to Waterloo service, he's running under cautionary signals and controlling the train speed accordingly. But he's having trouble actually seeing the signal aspects, with the AWS being unable to differentiate between cautionary and danger aspects. The signal up ahead, because of the low sunlight, seems to be clear to a single yellow. But does it? He can't really be sure. He lets the train run on, but the signal hasn't cleared and too late, he sees the red aspect. Although the driver thought he was employing the correct defensive driving techniques while running under cautionary signals, the fact that he was having difficulty in actually discerning the aspect shown means that he should have been fully prepared to stop at the signal, whatever. When push came to shove, he wasn't. It can be equally difficult to discern aspects when the sun is low behind you. Take a look at these examples, for instance. In these tricky lighting conditions, you should always be fully prepared to stop at the signal. If this causes late running, so be it. Don't take chances on aspects you can't properly see. And don't forget to report the problem to the signaller. It could prevent one of your mates making a bad mistake. While we're talking about aspects that can't properly be seen, let's consider a most unusual circumstance, but one which has caught many drivers in the past, the signal that's out. Now the rule book is quite clear that the signal that's out or failing to display an aspect must be taken to be a danger signal. This driver has just passed a distant signal showing a yellow aspect, and so he's braking the train. Ahead, but not yet visible, is a four aspect control signal protecting Petersfield. Due to an electrical failure, this signal is not displaying any aspect, it's out. As the train approaches the signal, the AWS warning horn sounds. The driver cancels it without thinking. Because there's no aspect showing, he fails completely to notice the defective signal. He thinks he's had a proceed aspect, or an AWS warning associated with an emergency, temporary or permanent speed restriction. It's not until the TPWS train stop loop intervenes that he realises something's wrong. Had the defective signal not been TPWS fitted, a collision might easily have resulted. Where did our hapless driver go wrong? Well, quite simply, by failing to observe the signal which was out. It's true that it wasn't very visible. At night, it might have been completely invisible. However, there are two important factors here. Firstly, the AWS warning horn should have alerted him. And secondly, his route knowledge should have told him that there's a signal at that location. So what action should he have taken? Well, we can use the simulator. I'm approaching the failed signal. But even if I can't see it yet, the AWS horn will bring it sharply to my attention. I can now see that it's out. An emergency brake application will stop the train in good time. A radio call to the signalling centre reports the defect and position of the train. This Class 377 Electrostar driver is approaching Bossom Station under cautionary signals. As he runs into the platform, he can see the starting signal at danger, and so he brings the train to a stand.
Now this service is not booked to call at Bossom, so instead of releasing the train doors, he simply waits a change of aspect. However, immediately ahead of the platform is Bossom AHB crossing. On this particular day, the crossing is under manual control for routine maintenance purposes. Seeing the train standing in the platform, the technician has lowered the barriers manually and its hand signaller is now showing a green flag to our driver. Unfortunately, our driver adds two and two to make five. He assumes that the signal has been held at danger because of work on the level crossing and that the green hand signal is therefore authority to pass the signal at danger. He sounds the train horn and proceeds. He is now heading for potential disaster. Never mind what the hand signaller should or should not have done, this spad was purely and simply the fault of the driver. No hand signal is authority to pass a signal at danger unless accompanied by a specific and unambiguous verbal instruction. The hand signaller had no idea whether the signal was on or off and was solely concerned with the safety of the level crossing. The message is one we've repeated many times. Don't make assumptions and never pass a signal at danger without the full and correct authority. If in any doubt, speak to the signaller personally. In our last scene, we'll take a look at a spad that resulted from a mindset familiar to all of us, but a dangerous one for all that. Squaring up to go home. This freight driver has just brought his container train into Heather Green Yard. The shunter is uncoupling and as soon as the engine is released, he'll be light to depot. Okay, okay mate, thank you. Cheers. The ground mounted position light signal ahead is cleared for movement towards the arrival road, so away he goes. With an occasional glance at the road ahead, our driver is now putting on his HVV and stowing his things away. He's in a hurry to get away. He's certainly not looking where he's going. The next position light signal protects the connections to the lee spur, and it's on but our hasty driver hasn't even noticed it. And crossing the Upley Spur enters the depot as though nothing has happened. In fact, he's very lucky to have avoided either a collision or a derailment. And he certainly won't be getting home soon now. The moral of this story is simple. Whether you're driving a train on the main line or a light engine in the yard or depot, the job requires 100% of your attention 100% of the time. Some of the situations we've looked at will be familiar to many of you, and it's true we can all make mistakes, but in this job, even small mistakes can have very serious consequences. By understanding the inherent risks, you can ensure that you don't get involved in a spad.